So you own an Oculus Quest 2, but you're worried that in time its battery will decrease and you wonder how do I properly charge it? Does it damage my battery if I leave it charging overnight? Should I turn off my Quest 2 when I charge it? And can battery banks actually damage my battery? Hi, this is Tatiana and in this video I will address some common myths and misconceptions about Oculus Quest 2 battery maintenance and I will also go over some tips and good practices to prolong its battery life. I have researched this topic quite extensively and this is going to be quite useful information here packed in this video, so please use the timestamps in the description for easier navigation. And of course, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to DiscoVR if you like handy videos like this. So if you're ready, let's go! To understand best practices for Quest 2 battery maintenance, first we need to understand what battery is in our Quest. According to the Oculus website, Quest 2 packs lithium-ion battery with a capacity of about 3600 mAh, which equals to roughly 3 hours of battery life. Here is a photo of this lithium-ion battery from Road to VR, who had actually made a teardown of Oculus Quest 2, and this is what your Quest 2 battery looks like. Basically, it is the same type of battery that you commonly find in modern smartphones. So what do we need to know about lithium-ion batteries? A lithium-ion battery works on ion movements between the positive and negative electrodes, which creates cycles of discharging and recharging. In theory, such a mechanism should work forever, but on practice, these repetitive cycles and exposures to high voltage cause battery aging, which decreases the battery performance over time. So now that we know the battery type in our Quest 2, we can go through some common myths about the battery care practices. First myth is that you should let the battery drop all the way down to 0% before recharging. It's false! A typical lithium-ion battery in most consumer products can take around from 500 to 1000 discharge cycles. Keep in mind that a full discharge cycle starts at 100% and ends after it drops all the way to 0%. The depth of discharge determines the cycle count of the battery. The depth of the discharge is the difference between 100% and the current charge level. The smaller the depth of discharge, the longer the battery will last. So the higher you keep your battery charge above zero, the better it is for the battery in the long run. It is highly recommended to avoid full discharges and instead to charge the battery more often between uses. Strangely enough, batteries are under the most strain when they're fully charged or completely empty. So the best practice to prolong the battery life in your Oculus Quest 2 is to keep its charge roughly between 20 and 80%. This myth is closely connected to the next myth. It is better to fully charge your battery before using Quest 2. Well, it is better for you, because then you will be able to play your Quest for longer, but for your battery life, not so much, so this one is false. As I have mentioned earlier, being completely discharged or fully charged are the states that put most strain on your battery. Specifically, when you charge your Quest, the applied charging voltage reaches its highest level when the charge capacity gets to about 80%. So charging between 80 and 100% is called saturation charge. Exposure to high voltage of saturation charge is the most damaging to your battery, and that's why it is not recommended. And this leads us to the next myth. Charging Quest 2 overnight leads to overcharging that damages the battery. This one is partially true, it's kind of true. Well, first of all, in modern devices there is no such thing as overcharging. The charge mechanism in lithium-ion batteries is used in such a way that when the charge reaches 100%, it cuts off the power. Then, when the charge drops to about 95-97%, to the charging mechanism tops it off to reach 100% again, and this cycle repeats, keeping the battery in a constant state of saturation charge. The problem is that you constantly cycle your battery in that range of 95-100%, to and as you know from previous myth, saturation charge causes much strain to the battery because it keeps applying the highest level of charging voltage. So it does cause some damage to your battery. What can you do? If you insist on charging your Quest overnight, the safest way to do so is by turning the device off. When the device is off, the charging level drops much slower, delaying the next saturation cycle and having fewer saturation cycles overall during the night. And a good habit is to simply turn off your Oculus Quest 
when you charge it overnight. Okay, turning off your device before going to sleep is easy, but keeping it between 20 and 80% is not just inconvenient, it also significantly reduces the time you can play, which is already quite short. And that's why many people buy power banks, and it led to a new myth. Playing and charging Oculus Quest at the same time can damage the battery. This one is false, but there is some truth to it. In theory, this is not true, but it can be damaging if you are using a very powerful power bank. Let's just remember that you need a power bank to increase the play time and not necessarily to charge your quest fast. In fact, charging it quickly will bring the battery to above 80% very fast, and that will continue causing much strain to the device due to the high voltage. Instead, it is best to use a power bank that has an output of power similar to your quest. Let's see what that means. We know that the best way to prolong the battery life is to allow the device to discharge as slow as possible, starting from an initial charge of about 80%. We also know that the battery capacity of the Quest 2 battery is around 3600 milliamp hours hours, and 3 hours is the official runtime. That means that the Quest 2 battery outputs about 1200 milliamps for 3 hours. So, the best battery bank for Oculus Quest 2 is the one with an output of about 1200 milliamps or even slightly less. I was able to test this theory by using a 1000 milliamps USB charger plugged into a power socket while playing with Quest 2. To compare, here's an official power plug from Oculus, which has a power output of 2 amps or 2000 milliamps. So, this one is considered a speed charger and it will bring your Quest 2 to full charge much quicker. But look, we don't need a speed charger charger here. We just need something that would let our Quest 2 to discharge very slowly. So I tested the power plug with 1 amp to see if it really would slow down the discharge rate. The battery will drain very slowly, at a rate of only 5% every 30 minutes. But that was a power plug, not a power bank. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find such a low-powered battery bank on Amazon. Most of them have an output of 2400, 2800 milliamps and above. For example, here is my power bank. Its total capacity is almost 24,000 milliamp hours, and the output is 3 amps, which is almost three times higher than what we need for our quest. In today's world, fast charging is a higher priority than the battery well being. So, practically, we just need to accept the fact that there's very little that we can do for Quest 2 battery when using a power bank. One of the things that you can do is buy a power bank with a low power output and start charging only after you have already drained your Quest 2 battery to about 20 or 30 percent. That way, you will keep your Quest within the safe voltage zone between 20 and 80 percent for longer. Also, try disconnecting power bank from your Quest once it reaches 80 percent. If you would like some recommendations for good power banks, I have included a few links in the description of this video. That's a lot of information, so here's the summary of helpful tips and best practices to maximize the battery life on your Quest 2. First, avoid fully discharging your battery and possibly don't drain it lower than 20%. Second, minimize the time your battery is charging above 80%. Third, if you leave your Quest charging overnight, always turn the power off. Fourth, if possible, do frequent charging instead of long charging sessions. Fifth, disconnect your Quest 2 from power plug or power bank while using the device until it drops to 20 or 30 percent and also after it reaches 80 percent. Sixth, use reputable and reliable power banks with a low output power and make sure it has a cutoff circuit to prevent overcharging. And seventh, do not expose or charge battery in extreme cold or hot temperatures. These are definitely the best practices, but of course it can be quite inconvenient to follow them all. One thing I want to mention is that even if you do occasionally stress the battery with non-perfect charging practices, chances are you will switch to a newer device way before you will notice any serious degradation of your battery capacity. But these best practices are definitely helpful for those of you who plan on keeping your Quest 2 for years to come. And that's it, I hope you've learned something new today. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Disco VR for more informative and fun VR content. Also, please join me on Patreon to provide some extra support and to receive some extra perks. Thank you so much for watching, stay safe and as always, happy gaming!